Hey fucks, welcome to the latest edition of Quarantine Ketchup. Today I'm going to be talking about Fantastic Planet, aka La Planète Sauvage. This is an animated French film from 1973 directed by René Laloux. This was on my watch list for a very long time, and thanks to the CCP locking the world in their own homes, I finally got to see it. And I'm not a fan of this one. Don't get me wrong, there is some stuff to appreciate about this film, but unfortunately the good elements of this film do not amount to a greater whole, and when you look at the big picture, this movie amounts to nothing more than just really nice looking bathroom graffiti. So let me start off with what I like about this film. The animation is phenomenal. The choice of colors, the realistic looking characters, and the backgrounds are all very gorgeous and mesh together very well. If I were judging this film solely on visuals and animation, I would call it a masterpiece without a doubt. But sadly, I do not subscribe to the Avatar school of judging movies, so with that being said, let's move on to what I don't like. Everything else. First of all, I find the soundtrack to be completely out of place and horribly distracting. The film incorporates this cliché 70s prog rock into the film, and it doesn't mesh at all. Honestly, in some scenes, it makes me laugh more than anything. This does not help the scene at all. If you want us to take this movie seriously, why does the music make me feel like I'm watching Starsky and Hutch? I know this movie was made during the height of the LSD era, so I can definitely understand why this Pink Floyd-esque music was incorporated into the film, but it does not mean it fits a movie like this, nor does it enhance the experience in any way. The music is boring at worst and out of place at best. And on top of that, the sound design is just awful. I don't know what the Foley artists were doing here, but they incorporate sounds that just don't fit at all. Take a look at this scene. C'est la bande du buisson creux. Attention. Why does it sound like it's punching a cube? The cube is being stabbed. It's being punctured. Why not give it a stabbing noise? Here, I'll do it right now. See? Already sounds better. What's worse is that this sounds almost the same as the sound of these cubes hitting the ground. What the fuck? Also, listen to this fucking impact noise. Are you fucking kidding me? This fucking bat birdo whatever the fuck is huge! And that's the sound it makes when it falls to the ground from a hundred feet in the air? Here, I can do it better right now! See? That is so much better than this! <laughs> There's plenty more examples of sound design that just annoyed the shit out of me, but if I nitpicked every single one of them, I'd be here for 10 hours. And I don't want to do that because unlike some people on YouTube, I like my videos to be well paced. Speaking of which, the pacing of this movie is complete, total, fucking ass. This classic is 72 minutes long, and it feels like three fucking hours. I feel like so many scenes were stretched out just so this could be considered a feature-length film. Take a look at this scene, for example. Now I know that calling a classic art house film boring automatically makes me an ADHD Marvel fanboy who should go watch Transformers, but this movie is boring. It's paced like a fucking turtle, and too many scenes run on way longer than they should. And there's also too many scenes where things just repeat themselves. You don't need multiple scenes where these drag kids play with these ums. We get it. You don't need to beat us over the head with it. And on that note, good God. 
This movie is so heavy-handed with its message. First of all, the humans in this movie are called ums, which is close to the French word um, which is French for man. Wow, subtle. I wonder what you're trying to say. Oh wow, the drags are treating humans like pets and exterminating humans like they're insects, just like we do to other species on Earth. Do you get it? Do you get it? Do you get it? <laughs> I couldn't help but think of another movie made around that time where humans were treated like animals by the planet's dominant species, and I'm gonna say it, Planet of the Apes did it way better. You know why? Because the movie told a fucking story! It had interesting moments that kept your attention. Take your sticking paws off me, you damn dirty ape! It had memorable characters. It didn't try to shove the message down your fucking throat! Now on to the characterization. I've watched this movie three times and I can't remember a single character's name from this film. I get that this film is more plot driven and message driven, but even in Christopher Nolan's plot heavy films, you could still remember the characters' names and they each have different personalities. This movie, however, fails spectacularly in that aspect. All the drag characters are interchangeable, all the ums are interchangeable and unmemorable, and it doesn't help that their voice actors are fucking brutal. I don't know if sounding completely boring and disinterested in what was going on was the intention, but I can't feel a single ounce of emotion from these voice actors. When the tension in the film is at its highest, these performers sound mildly concerned at best, and even that feels forced. Les drags vont nous massacrer. Ils nous punissent d'avoir volé leur science. Wow, you sound so scared. What are you going to do? Il est grand temps, Maître Sin, que nous prenions des décisions réellement efficaces. Je propose que les parcs soient désomisés deux fois par cycle. Can we get a sense of fucking urgency here? Seriously, if these voice actors don't sound emotionally invested, why should I be emotionally invested? Sorry, folks, I just don't like this film. And I know there's gonna be a lot of film snobs from Letterboxd that are going to put my intelligence in question and probably compare me to Jeremy Johns or some shit. Look, I like a lot of international films, and I also like a lot of adult-oriented animated films. This one, though, just wasn't for me. The animation is incredible, but unfortunately it falls apart in every other way for me. It doesn't mean I'm stupid or that I have bad taste or whatever the fuck these snobs will accuse me of. It just means Fantastic Planet isn't my thing. I'm sorry, but I don't recommend this one. All right, thanks for watching my review. Stay tuned for my next review, which will be on the 2012 Danish classic, The Hunt. Bye bye, tabarnak.